Hello, my dear friend. My name is Marshu Bhardwaj. I am a senior geophysicist and a management professional. Uh, in this video, I will uh, give you a basic framework of how to develop a neuro net, neuro fuzzy uh, machine learning model to predict the mineralized zone. Uh, suppose you want to start a mine. What are the, what is the first thing you will do? You have to locate the mineral sources first, but uh, for doing that, uh, locating the mineral sources is not an easy task. Means uh, you have a very large area to search for, and the deposits are so scarce, so rare that you require certain so some specific information to locate those mineral sources. So. Uh, at the very initial phase of an exploration project, you have a very limited information. Uh, so you have to develop uh, you have to develop information based on whatever data you uh, is available with you. So suppose you start a, you want to start a mine in a certain area where uh, only limited information such as lithological or a regional scale map is available. So you need to uh, collect some other data such as uh, geochemical data or a regional scale uh, aeromagnetic data, which are cheaper to get, cheaper to acquire uh, because certain governments uh, promotes mining and because of that they tell us certain data infrastructure. For example, Zambian government uh, collected aeromagnetic data. So, uh, and they provide aeromagnetic data to the uh, to the investors who want to invest in Zambian mining project uh, because copper is the backbone of Zambian economy. So, uh, these data, uh, Zambian government, in order to promote the capital formation in the mining industry, Zambian government provide these data to the investors. So at the very initial phase of a mining project or an exploration project, you have a certain data and some data set that are cheaper to acquire uh, can also be done. Uh, for example, uh, at the recognition survey stage, you can collect uh, geochemical data. So these informations are available with you at the very beginning stage of a mining project but problem is that uh, if you want to predict a model manually uh, it will become a herculean task because integration integrating lots of information is really difficult uh, and so a computer model can help you in developing these models uh, these prediction and in this way uh, whole bunch of time energy and cost can be saved and also uh, manual interpretation is full of human error so th there is a higher chance that one may miss the highly potent zone which are which could uh, give you a larger resources so that can be missed. So uh, if you are able to develop a computer model, particularly the uh, machine learning, deep learning model, then you can predict the mineral potential zone accurately. Another thing is uh, in this video, I'm not going to cover the fundamental concept of geophysics or geology or how to develop machine learning model because I assume that the viewer of this video will be knowing all these things. Only thing I will cover the uh, what is necessary because if I cover each and every part of the uh, technique then the video will be very large that I don't want to do. So I assume that the viewer will be uh, well aware of deep learning neural network or fuzzy logic or uh, geophysical various geophysical techniques such as aeromagnetic data or the airborne gravity survey or other geochemical data. I'm not going to cover these information. So 
let us come to our point uh, how to start with because uh, searching a mineral zone in a uh, in a large scale map which is which could be as large as the size of a state or a size of a country is uh, is synonymous to searching a needle in the haystack so it is really difficult to locate a mineral mineralized zone and that is why we need certain data. We need different kind of information that is necessary to predict a mineralized zone. Uh, the very basic data that are commonly used are the lithological information. But first of all, we have to define the metallogenetic model of the mineral deposit. Because why a mineral had been deposited at a certain uh, time, we need to know that there are different kind of mineral deposit like scan deposit. In scan deposit, a dike or a magmatic material comes at the surface and it also brings certain metals like copper, manganese or gold, silver. These kind of metals are brought by the magmatic magma and those metals are deposited uh, at the crust of the earth near the uh, surface. There are certain other kind of deposit like hydrothermal deposit. In hydrothermal deposit, uh, again, these dikes are responsible because they are uh, the main uh, source rock where the metals are located. And these metals are dissolved by the hydrothermal fluid and the hydrothermal fluid carries these metals and gradually uh, the hydrothermal fluid deposits the material at a in a host rock uh, there are of course there is other kind of deposit like super gene deposit in which a goson is a source rock so a rain water or a water leased the metals and get deposit in this case i will cover the copper deposit of zambia because uh, we have to take a certain specific case. So uh, I have a lot of experience of working in Zambia where uh, I led the uh, geophysical projects for copper and manganese uh, exploration. So I have the knowledge as well as the experience of searching copper and manganese in Zambia. So that is why I have chosen this area for developing the neurofuzzy model for predicting the mineral deposits. So uh, let us start the discussion with some slide uh, so that I can clear my point. Uh, I can present my point in a clear and concise manner. So let me share my slide first and then we will discuss how I developed the model. So this is uh, so first of all, we have to define what kind of deposits are present. There are different kind of deposits, of course. So we need to know what are the factors that cause the mineral deposit and certain structural features which are highly associated with the mineral deposit, such as the shear zone fault or uh, other structural features. In addition to the structural features, there are some lithological association. Like in Zambia, uh, the deposits are strata bound sedimentary hosted deposit. So we need to search a certain kind of lithology because these deposits are found in a certain formation. So if you know the location of the of those certain formation, how and where they are exposed to the surface and what are the deep and strike of those. But based on this structural feature, you can locate those formation. So if you know the know that thing, then you can search the copper easily. But the problem with this uh, uh, in Zambia is that uh, you cannot find the exposure easily because the Zambia is in Africa and uh, in Africa, the land is completely covered by bushes. So you will not be able to see the rock 
exposed rock because the area is highly covered by the thick bush and that is why it is difficult to do a geological mapping in Zambia which is unlike India or any other part of the world. So uh, that is the reason why uh, geochemical data helps you a lot uh, and gives you a lot of vital information and these geochemical data is very easy to obtain, very cheap to obtain because only investment is in the XRF machine and that can be easily, uh, that can be purchased unlike other data sets which are highly costly. For example, if you are doing uh, geophysical survey then you need to procure the entire system, hardware as well as the software system. So that is the reason why uh, I have uh, taken this geochemical data as a recognition survey. And the data set that I uh, earlier discussed, the aeromagnetic data. So if you want to survey a very large area to the size of a city or to the size of a state or the entire country, then aeromagnetic data is a cheaper option because ground magnetics uh, humanly not possible to uh, get the data uh, with the ground magnetics. So aeromagnetic data we can consider. So in the case of Zambia, uh, as my slide shows, so what are the basic data sets that are required for developing a neuro fuzzy model? So the basic data set I have chosen and I will explain why I have chosen this data set because because of certain reason uh, we require a stratigraphic map because uh, certain deposits are highly associated to a time scale because these deposit uh, the deposition happens in a geological time so these are highly associated with the stratigraphy of the area for example copper deposit in Zambia happened in the time of uh, you can say uh, uh, 500 million year ago. So uh, a Lufian arc formed in the Zambian area and the deposit happened. So it is highly associated with a stratigraphic unit that is called uh, the Katangan group. The Katangan group overlain the it just overlain the uh, basement rock. So basement rock is the oldest rock of Zambia and just after the basement rock you will find the Katangan group. All these deposits are found near the interface of the basement rock and the Zambian uh, and the lower one group. So this is a very key information. It is like uh, you have to act like a spy because every evidence is important for locating the mineral zone. So geochem data, as I discussed earlier, that geochem data is easier to obtain. Aeromagnetic data again these aeromagnetic data is available. So with the help of these three data and if you have additional data like gravity, airborne gravity data or the airborne electromagnetic data, then it is a plus. So uh, why developing the predictors means uh, in any machine learning method, you require certain features or the predictor based on which you develop a regression model or a classification model. So uh, predictors, we have to develop a predictor. In our case, it is not straightforward. Means we have to extract information from other available data. For example, lithological association. So uh, lithological association, as I told you that uh, the deposits are highly associated with a certain kind of lithology. Similarly, uh, stratigraphic association, as I told you that the deposit happened at a certain time scale. So that is why a certain group or a certain stratigraphy is, is responsible for the production of copper or deposition. So uh, and the thing is the association of igneous intrusives such as magma dikes. So, in hydrothermal deposits, the dikes are the source rock, means they bring the material to the surface. So you will find all the deposits 
in and around the dikes. Also, these magmatic dikes are the heat sources, means they are the driving force of the hydrothermal fluid. So, these hydrothermal fluids gets the energy from these uh, magmatic dikes. It also gets the material from the magnet magmatic dikes and it gets the material deposited in a favorable sedimentary environment uh, in Zambia. So, uh, so uh, the location of these intrusive dikes are very important while locating the mineral deposits. And the important factor is the structural features. So, you know the lineament structure or lineaments are the very large scale structure up to the uh, from 2 km to 10 km in length. So these lineament structure like fold and folds or the network of fold and folds are highly are the evidence that you may find mineral in and around these structures. So these two things are these four consideration or these four uh, points I have considered to develop a predictor for the neuro fuzzy machine learning model. So uh, what are the sources of data available so that I could develop a machine learning model based on which. So I have the regional geological map. I can show you how one can get the regional geological map. So uh, this is the portal of a Zambian government. So here cadastry map, you can get these. This is the copper belt region where the coppers, copper is found. So these are the small and large scale licenses, artisanal mi mining rights. So these polygons showing the either the large or the small scale license. Similarly, there are, so you can get the geological data from this site. So you can see the brown colored polygon is nothing but the, it is showing the lower Rowan group, which is the main copper bearing unit of uh, Zambia. It is a part of Katangan, uh, Katangan, uh, stratigraphic unit. So it was deposited in the late Precambrian or the lower Paleozoic era. So lower Paleozoic, you, you know the Paleozoic era. So this copper deposit occurred in the Paleozoic era, particularly Silurian to Devonian in the lower Paleozoic era. So these are the main copper bearing zone and you will find that all the mines, particularly the Konkola mines, you will be knowing aware of the Konkola mines, which were earlier, uh, means which is now under the control of the government, but Vedanta group is trying to acquire this mine again by acquiring the majority of state, but they are in a stage of valuing the mine, mining property. Means they are doing, they will do whether the, what could be the uh, deal of this mine project means in terms of value. So, but this Konkola mine is the largest mine of Zambia. There are other mines which are all are, all the copper are mainly 80% of copper are produced by the lower one group. So this lower one group is a very important uh, lithology for the location of the mineral deposit and in the lower one group you will find uh, copper are found in a certain stratigraphic in a certain lithologic unit so so just go back to this slide and then I will show you what are the what are those units. So as I told you uh, back to the, our discussion that we have the regional geological map I, as I shown you where from where one can get this map. 
and their information is the lithological map so generally it is very difficult to do a geological mapping in the area so for getting a lithological information we can use the geochemical map so geochemical data could give you the information about the various lithology for example sedimentary or igneous lithology and there are certain other kind of information that can be obtained from a geochemical data and the data and the data is the aeromagnetic data so what information we can get i will explain one by one so this is the stratigraphic and lithologic uh, stratigraphy of the area so you can see this is the main copper bearing zone the ore shale so we have to locate this lithology on the surface of the area if we want to locate a mineral deposit and the thing is that the copper is also found in the moassa group or the this is called the uh, moassa group of the upper rohan so also it is found in the guba group and the kundalungu formation so these are the main formation so in the kundalungu formation it is found in the calcareous chert similarly in the in the uh, upper rohan group it is found in uh, it is associated with the dolomitic lithology type means either limestone or dolomitic silt or dolomitic shales you find the copper here so these lithology are highly associated with the copper deposit so we need to search this deposit so what information we can get from the geochemical data is that uh, we can we can get the lithological information for example in this cross plot or the cluster analysis i have shown that uh, how low aluminium content uh, or the high aluminium content can be associated with the clay mineral of the rock so a shale for example is having a more clay mineral so it can give you a high aluminium content similarly for granite you can plot a titanium or zircon ppm so you can isolate granite from other lithology type similarly mafic rock can be isolated Uh, again, using a titanium or the scandium cross plot. So, with the help of cluster analysis, we can build. Uh, we can build a lithological information database. Similarly, uh, we can also trace the redox formed because redox reactions are very important in case of mineral deposition. somewhere oxidation is taking place somewhere reduction is taking place so when copper is deposited it it is it reduces the uh, uh, reduction re, uh, reaction to uh, take place so that is why uh, these redox boundary are very important and also we need to find the true copper anomaly because whatever raw anomaly we get from the geochemical data is misleading some uh, anomalies are not associated with the copper deposit so we have to isolate we have to remove those misleading information from the data set and that can be done using the factor analysis or principal component analysis or the uh, cross plot or pearson correlation plot so this is the pearson correlation plot of various elements uh, and the cluster analysis has been done based on which now uh, let us talk about the copper deposit of zambia and the congo democratic republic of congo in both the country copper are associated with the lupian arc in Z in congo it is found in the red bed which is just the overlying bed of the basement and in zambia it is found in the lower rohan group as i discussed so all the mines this is the location of all the mines or the copper deposit so these are the location so we can develop a predictor map based on this structural information these are the solvezi dome in the zambia and lushwesi dome 
Konkola mine is just near the Changa granite, a granite or intrusion that took place in the uh, post Katangan basement means after the basement formation and the uh, Katangan uh, formation then later intrusion took place and uh, the copper deposition is associated with that so this is again this the important thing is that the deposit of copper in Zambia is highly associated it is a strata bound deposit so one have to look a particular formation a particular strata in order to locate the mineral sources so this is the predictor map that i developed from the geological and the location of the existing mine and the existing uh, deposits so based on which uh, some structural features are highly associated so i i developed a gray value map uh, the minimum value is zero and the maximum is one so one means the high means the maximum one is the highest chances of getting mineral and the zero is the no chances of getting mineral so for example i developed this from so this is this could be the one predicted map so this is related to the lithology and geology of the area and the thing is the structural information from where we could get the structural information the obvious data is the aeromagnetic data because aeromagnetic data gives you a structural information it gives you the information of the fold or, or the linear mental structure so i have used this data to get the structural information that are highly associated with the mineral deposit so uh, we can trace a linear mint map i can show you how i develop this map so what I used, I used, uh, uh, I used this uh, aerial map. So this is the, uh, I have used, I have processed this data on Python. So one can get the linear mint information. This is the aeromagnetic data. And this is the regional scale linear mint. So one can trace this linear mint structure and the uh, linear mint structure is this so uh, i have used the open cv so based on which i trace the linear mint structure on python so one may observe that the a group of linear mint is, uh, is uh, oriented in a certain direction means either in the northwest direction for example this group is along the northwest direction this group is the northeast direction so there are certain group in which the linear mint is oriented so we have to define uh, mineral deposit is associated in which type of linear mint means uh, what is its orientation so we can use a rose diagram and that shows the frequency of the linear mint uh, on the basis of its orientation so for example in the lupin arc area or the copper belt area of the zambia the minerals are associated with northwest direction linear mint so we can use this information as a predictor so more closer you are with this linear mint more chances of getting a mineral deposit but uh, you have to make a buffer zone means suppose you are closest to this linear mint then the chances will be highest and as you move further uh, away from this linear mint your chances of getting mineral reduces so you can make a uh, probability map based on this linear mint structure so this is the aeromagnetic data that i got from so you have the aeromagnetic data you can easily make this linear mint structure on python 
uh, which cost you nothing because these are all open source packages or you can you develop your own code for processing this information which is not a very difficult task to uh, do so i have made this lineament for example one can also go with the uh, magmatic structure these are the magmatic intrusive bodies magmatic bodies so if you are more closer to these bodies you have higher chances of getting a mineral deposit but the moment you move further your chances get reduced so uh, get reduced so this is how i made the lineament map so as i told you you need to make a buffer zone in and around means if you are closer to this lineament you your chances are highest as you move away from this linear intersection your chances of getting mineral deposit reduces so the probability value is assigned accordingly so one can see that this is a northwest trending trending lineament so you have to again orientation of this lineament is very important it means you have to uh, define which which direction of lineament is important for the mineral deposit for example whether it is northwest facing or the northeast facing or some other direction so you have to define the uh, you have to assign the probability according to the direction of the lineament also not only the proximity of the position to the lineament but the orientation of the lineament this uh, information is very important so once you have developed this two predictor map then you can use it as a uh, predictor to uh, train the neuro fuzzy model so what is neuro fuzzy model let me discuss first the neuro fuzzy model is nothing but the uh, hybrid of neural network and the fuzzy logic so you, you will be aware of the fuzzy logic you have to define the membership function and uh, you fuzzy fuzzify a data set and then uh, you defuzzify the data set so you require certain kind of function to defuzzification for defuzzification and for the fuzzification so membership fun function is required so but for only if you want to develop a model based on the fuzzy logic then you need to have the information of uh, uh, the membership function means you have to manually or you have to based on your knowledge you have to define the uh, membership function but if you want to train it with the help of neural network means uh, if you want to train the fuzzy membership function uh, with the help of certain data your labeled data then you have to use a neural network also so the hybrid of this means the combination of fuzzy logic and the neural network is called neuro fuzzy model so a deep neural network you can use means deep neural network means you have a multiple layers of uh, neural network so a deep neural network along with the fuzzy uh, whose weight matrix is nothing but so because in neural network you use a weight matrix so these weight matrix are trained with for uh, with the training data set but in neuro fuzzy model you train instead of using weight function you weight uh, matrix you use the membership function of the fuzzy logic so you tune this uh, membership function with the help of training data set so this is the whole concept of so there, there is a rule based uh, fuzzification means you can use the fuzzy inference engine rule based means if x is, x is this y is this then output is this so in which you can make a rule and make a membership function and these membership functions are trained by the neural network so this is the whole concept of neuro fuzzy model so i'm not going to discuss this in much detail this is just for the uh, information important thing is how to develop the predictor because 
this is the most difficult and most painful part of the machine learning project uh, if you have a good training data set your model will be will perform good if you have a very bad data set then it will produce more error so this is the estimated fuzzy membership values that i got from the so predictor you can see the lithology as a predictor steady graphic unit as a predictor sedimentary environment and the mafic igneous rock means uh, this information could be could we can get from the uh, porphyry map or the magnetic map of the area then the proximity of the point from the lineament or some shear zone so if you are in between 0 to 2 kilometer then you have a higher chances of getting mineral deposit if you are more than 6 10 kilometer then you have accordingly very less chance of getting mineral deposit so this will be your final out output in the form of probability map so this probability map is showing a mineral potential zone means higher probability means higher chances of getting a mineral deposit and the vice versa so this kind of model can be developed for locating a mineral deposit in a very large scale map which is not manually possible to you cannot explore each and every area yeah, so first you have to filter out certain area and then this filter filtered out area is qualified for the detailed exploration means you can further do detailed exploration such as uh, you can do ip resistivity survey or seismic survey or you can do the detailed drilling once you have proven that the uh, that you have found a certain mineral deposit so you can plan for detailed drilling so this is what the this is what the whole process of developing a neuro fuzzy uh, model so uh, let me show you how i uh, implemented this neuro fuzzy model in python so this is the python implementation of the neuro fuzzy model so as one can see that uh, it is very easy to use NFS. You have to choose NFS package and then you have to define everything here. This is the hybrid neural network. So here, here the epoch means iterations. You can, this is the main body of the model. And then you have the forward pass the backward pass means in the forward pass you calculate the forward or the calculated data and then you have a backward pass means you then adjust the error uh, by comparing it with some label data and then you adjust the membership function value this is what i did and then i implemented it on the using of nfs and all so you have the predictor map training data set you have the target data set target data set you can develop as i discussed earlier with the help of the known deposit which are easily available you can find in any published report or any published government report that these are the existing deposits so you can associate it with the lithology with the stratigraphy with the uh, structural features of the area so this is this was all about developing a machine learning or a neuro fuzzy model for predicting the mineral deposit or for uh, developing a mineral potential map so and, uh, i will also uh, prepare i am also preparing videos for uh, uh, developing models for how to financial models for how to decide the optimum uh, drill hole spacing and some other mining related videos keep watching my channel thank you very much